If you want to get your first job in the cloud industry, it's extremely important that you complete high quality cloud projects using the technologies that employers are looking for. Today, I'm going to walk you through the five high quality projects for beginners. Completing these projects will put you in the top 1% of applicants applying for those jobs. The technologies that these projects will cover are AWS, Terraform, CICD, Docker, and Python. By the time you've completed all these projects, you will have gained the hands-on experience using these five important technologies. Next steps will be to update and improve your resume to highlight these new skills. The first project you should work on is the auto-scaling project. One of the key benefits of the cloud is that infrastructure can be scaled quicker and easier than on-premises infrastructure. This means that your ability to demonstrate your cloud scaling abilities is valuable to employers. Here's your first project scenario. A company has an EC2 instance hosting a web server. Everything is pretty stable until the marketing department starts running promotions that prove to be a hit with customers. This causes the website to receive spikes in traffic at different times. Every time there's a spike in traffic, the server gets overloaded until it fails, which causes the site to go down. This then leads to customers being disgruntled because they can't access the site. Not ideal. Your tech lead considers some scaling options, including vertical scaling, which is where the instance resources are increased. For example, if the original instance is two vCPU and five gigs of RAM, vertical scaling is making it five CPU and 10 gigs of RAM. But after digging deeper into the data, they realized that the spike only occurred once or twice per week and the cost of having a larger instance far outweighed the benefits. After some extra consideration, your tech lead decides on horizontal scaling, which is where more instances are added to meet the increased demand. This means that rather than having one big instance, you can have two or three smaller instances that can be scaled up or down depending on traffic levels through auto scaling. You have now been set the task of setting up the auto scaling so this solution happens automatically. Your goal is to create a web server that can scale up and down to meet website traffic demands. For example, if your website is getting a lot of traffic, then it adds more EC2 instances to deal with the increased workload. And when the traffic goes down, it reduces the number of EC2 instances to save on costs. As you can see from the diagram, there are multiple resources you need to create to make this work. Let's walk through the steps of creating this. Step one involves creating three public and three private subnets where all the other resources are going to be created. Step two involves writing an EC2 user data script, which means that when a new instance is created and deployed, it's automatically configured with the instance settings like Apache or Nginx web service. Step three involves creating an auto scaling group and configuring it. Step four requires you to create an application load balancer in the public subnet and connect it to the auto scaling group configurations. In step five, you create auto scaling policies that trigger the scaling activities. This can be achieved in one or two ways. The first way is to create a CloudWatch alarm that monitors the CPU utilization of the EC2 instances. If the average CTU utilization goes above 70%, then the auto scaling group will add a new EC2 instance to deal with the increased workload. Create a second CloudWatch alarm that also monitors the CPU utilization of the EC2 instances. This time, it's triggered if the average CPU utilization goes below 20%. This shows that there is less traffic going to the instances, which means there is an excess of EC2 instances and some of these instances can be terminated. The second way to trigger scaling is with a method called target tracking. This is where you set a policy that you always want the average CPU utilization to be about 30%. This means that EC2 instances get added or removed automatically to make sure the average always stays at about 30%. This project demonstrates a lot of the skills that employers are looking for. Talking about this project on your resume or in interviews will help highlight your understanding of how scalability works in the cloud. You should also highlight the fact that this implementation includes security because you're putting the web servers in private subnets rather than public subnets which is what most people do. It's important to emphasize your understanding of cost saving because not only are you scaling up or down to meet increased demand, but you also have triggers that reduce the number of EC2 instances when there is less traffic, which saves money. And of course, this is important to employers. If you're on a comprehensive video solution to not only this project, but also all the projects I'm going to talk about in this episode, make sure you watch till the end and I'll show you how to build these high quality projects in detail. 
The next project we're going to talk about is a CI CD project. And if you're finding this episode interesting so far, then chances are that you're a cloud beginner looking to break into the cloud industry. Make sure you download our free guide, Three Simple Steps to Your First Cloud Job, so you can get some of these examples and you can get the step-by-step -step of what you need to get that first cloud job. This guide walks you through the most common mistakes beginners make so you can avoid them, what technology you need to learn to stand out to employers, and how to write your resume and interview to impress hiring managers. Link is in the description, make sure you download it now. CICD stands for Continuous Integration and Continuous Deployment, and it's an important part of the application development process. CICD is essential to automating the process of building, testing, and deploying code. Now here's your scenario. A company has been making code changes by SSHing on the server and manually updating the code. This has led to a lot of issues with untested code being uploaded directly to production, which has led to errors, application crashes, and website failures. To fix these issues, they have decided to implement a CI-CD pipeline to automate the deployment of code to stop developers from manually uploading code to the servers. Your task is to create a CI-CD pipeline that takes your code from your local computer and automatically deploys them on an EC2 instance in AWS. Here's how we make it happen. Step one involves creating a remote code repository. In our example, we're going to use GitHub, but you can also use other options like GitLab or Bitbucket. Step two involves setting up AWS code pipeline, which is the main pipeline that acts as the backbone of all our operations. Step three involves setting up AWS code deploy, which is our tool to deploy the code to EC2 instance. Step four, involves configuring all these services to connect to each other to complete the pipeline. The test that this works is that we can upload code from our local computer to a remote repository in GitHub. Once the code is in GitHub, it automatically triggers code pipeline to take that code and deploy it on our EC2 using code deploy. The CI/CD project will impress hiring managers for three reasons. The first is that a pipeline like this will enable the organization to create faster application deployments. This means that they can release new features and implement bug fixes faster, which will allow them to stay ahead of the competition. The second benefit of CI-CD is that it helps improve the quality of code because you can implement automated testing throughout the pipeline, which can catch errors earlier in the development process and prevents them from reaching production and causing issues. The third benefit of implementing CI-CD is that it encourages a more collaborative development process between teams, as code changes can be reviewed by multiple members members of a team before deployment occurs. I have reviewed hundreds of resumes from cloud beginners and not a lot of them have good CI CD projects. And so if you can do this, you will seriously stand out from the competition. The third project we're going to work on is a serverless system to automatically turn EC2 instances on and off to save money. This is probably one of the most advanced projects for beginners because it involves serverless. The skills you're going to use here are your programming skills using Python and serverless technologies using AWS Lambda. Here's the scenario. A company has a development EC2 web server that is only used during office hours, which is 9am to 5pm, Monday to Friday. The company is looking for ways to reduce their cloud cost, and they've realized that by turning off the EC2 instance when it's not in use, they will be able to save about 60% of cost. They want you to figure out an automated way to stop the instances at the end of the workday at 5 p.m. and start it at the beginning of the workday at 9 a.m. Now that we understand the problem, let's discuss the solution. The first step is to create two Lambda functions. The first Lambda function will be written in Python and you will write a script to turn the EC2 instance off using Boto3, which is the AWS SDK for Python. We call this function the stop Lambda. Once you have tested this, you then create the second Lambda with the exact same settings, except this time you script it to turn the instances on. Let's call this the start Lambda. Now that the Lambdas are ready, you can create two CloudWatch event triggers using Amazon EventBridge. A quick note about EventBridge. EventBridge is an AWS service that allows you to create, run, and manage scheduled tasks at scale. It can trigger AWS Lambda functions through a scheduled trigger. This is where you configure a time schedule for the Lambda to be triggered. For example, you could configure a Lambda function to be triggered every day at 6 p.m. This is called a scheduled event. Now that we know about EventBridge, we can configure two event triggers and connect them to their respective Lambdas. One event trigger for 9 a.m. every day, Monday to Friday, and this is connected to the start Lambda. The the second event trigger that is scheduled for 5 p.m. every day, Monday to Friday, can be connected to the stop lambda. The output of this is that every weekday morning, the EC2 instance automatically starts up 
at 9 a.m. and it automatically stops at 5 p.m. This should save the company a lot of money. As you can see, this project not only shows up your programming skills, but also your understanding of serverless technologies. But most importantly, it shows your understanding of cloud cost saving strategies, which is always valuable to employers. The next project I want you to complete is one that involves Docker and container technologies. Here's the scenario. Your company wants you to spin up a blog and they decide that WordPress is the best way to go. Traditionally, WordPress would have been deployed on an EC2 instance, but they've decided that they want to use this new technology they've been hearing about called Docker. And if possible, they would like the solution to be serverless. To achieve this goal, you turn to Amazon ECS Fargate. Fargate is an Amazon technology that allows you to run containers serverlessly, which means that there is no need to configure or manage servers or EC2 instances. One of the benefits of Fargate is that you save on operation overhead as you don't need to manage, secure or scale any servers. All you need to manage is your containerized application and this provides huge time savings for developers. Here are the steps to make this project happen. Step one involves creating a VPC with three public subnets and three private subnets. Step two involves creating an application load balancer in the public subnet that will route traffic to the containers once they are ready. Step three involves creating an RDS in a private subnet that will act as the database layer to our application. Step four involves creating an ECS cluster and configuring the service and task definitions with the container image and other details. Step five involves giving them permissions to communicate with each other using security groups and IAM permissions. This is an excellent project to demonstrate your expertise with Docker and ECS Fargate and completing this puts you in a better position to get that job offer because this is the sort of experience that employers are looking for. The final project we're going to talk about today is the Terraform project. For those who don't know, Terraform is what is known as an infrastructure as code tool. Before we proceed, it's important to understand what infrastructure as code is and why it's important. Traditionally, when you create cloud resources, you usually do it by clicking about in the console. However, there is a better way to achieve the same outcome. Rather than doing it manually by hand, you can now create your infrastructure using scripts and code files, hence the name infrastructure as code. One of the benefits of IEC over manual deployment is that it allows your infrastructure to be scalable. Here's an example. Let's assume you manage the AWS infrastructure of a growing SaaS company, which has deployed dozens of EC2 instances and RDS databases in the North Virginia region. They decide to expand to Europe and in order to reduce latency to improve the user experience, they want to duplicate all their North Virginia resources in the Ireland region. If all the original resources were created using the console, then it would take a long time to identify all the resources that need to be moved and then manually recreate those resources. By doing it this way, it will not only take a lot of time to recreate the right resources, but there's also the risk of human error because maybe an EC2 instance or database gets missed out in the process. If, however, all the infrastructure has been scripted using a tool like Terraform, then duplicating all the resources in a new region would be a lot easier because all that would be required is that a few parameters to be updated and for the code to be redeployed in the new region creating all those resources. In summary, making a change like recreating all the cloud resources in a new region using the manual method would be time consuming and prone to error. But by creating all the resources using infrastructure as code, recreating them in a new region can be done quickly and without the risk of human error. Now that you understand why Terraform is important, here's the project I'd like you to complete. The project is exactly the same as the first project we talk about, which is the auto-scaling project, except this time, rather than creating all those resources using the AWS console, I want you to recreate them using Terraform. If you can do this, then you'll demonstrate to cloud employers that you have the automation skills that they're looking for. This will help you stand out and become more employable. Now earlier, I promised to show you where you can go see a comprehensive video solutions to all these projects. If you're on the solution, all you need to do is sign up to the Cloud Career Acceleration Program at cloudcareermentor.com. Link is in the description below. This program will not only help improve your technical skills, with high quality projects, but will also improve your communication skills, your resume skills, your interview skills. It gives you everything you need to do to be successful in the cloud industry. Don't just take my word for it. Here's what one of our students had to say. The Cloud Career Mentor program exceeded my expectations in every aspect. The comprehensive curriculum not only equipped me with the in-demand skills, 
but also provided hands-on experience crucial to real-world scenarios. What truly set this program apart is a dedicated focus on preparation for real skills in real-world scenarios. The interview module is tailored to mirror real interview situations, offering valuable insights and boosting my confidence. The instructor with his industry experience provided guidance that was crucial in helping me to get that cloud job. Thanks to this program, I secured a cloud job soon after completion. The skills I gained not only impressed my employers during the interview, but proved instrumental in excelling in my day-to-day -day responsibilities. I wholeheartedly recommend this bootcamp to anyone aspiring to thrive in a dynamic cloud industry. So, if you want to be the next one to leave a testimonial on this channel and have your quotes read out by me, why not sign up at cloudcareermentor.com? Are you curious to learn how one of my students was able to transition from a career in sales to a career in the cloud industry? Check out this video episode here called how he went from sales to a cloud engineer in three months. I guarantee you'll get a ton of valuable insight from it. See you in the next one.